One of the questions I get asked all the time in the comment section is, how do I come up with such sick beats? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you Impact Drums in PreSonus Studio One. It is a virtual instrument where you can create your own drum beats and loops. My whole channel is for music production tips and advice, specifically if you're in a home studio environment like this. All of my videos, I try to aim at beginners on a very step-by-step -step process, so I try not to gloss over any of the details. If you enjoy this kind of content, the best thing you can do is actually go to heychrisgreen.com. I've got a free newsletter so that anytime I drop a new video, which is at least once or twice a week, you're gonna get an email letting you know where the video is and what's in the video. Also hit the like and subscribe buttons if you're watching on YouTube. It goes a long way to support the channel. And let me know in the comment section, is there anything that you want me to cover specifically in PreSound Studio One or recording music in general? Be happy to make a video on that. With that being said, let's jump into PreSonus Studio One and start recording some fat drum beats using impact drums. When you're met with the new session of PreSonus Studio One, you want to go to the Browse tab. And on the Browse tab, you can see here on the right, you have a tab for instruments, or you can go up to the top, select instruments, scroll down to where you see impact. Impact is very much like those push controllers that you've seen a lot. You just simply click and drag this over to your session and it'll create a new track. If you don't see impact drums under your instruments folder, go up to at the top, you'll have Studio One, Studio One installation, and you want to make sure that you have impact drums already installed on your system. If you go to installed content, scroll down to where it says impact drum kits. You want to make sure that one is downloaded. In today's video, I am running Studio One Professional version six but I'm gonna try and keep all the presets and sounds that I'm using from this video, I'm gonna use from the artist edition. So if you have the artist version of Studio One, you should have access to all of these different drum samples. Now I'm gonna grab my headphones and let's start recording some drums. All right, so here I've got impact drums loaded in PreSonus Studio One. First thing you wanna do is go up to the default tab where it has the presets loaded and look at what PreSonus has to offer. So your version of PreSonus Studio One may have more presets, it may have less presets, Hopefully you have available the Thuddy 70s kit. This one's near the bottom. The Thuddy 70s kit to me sounds most like an acoustic set of drums. So most of you out there, if you're just getting into sort of this beat making stuff, you may wanna rely on the 70s drum kit. That way you can treat it just like normal drums. Or if you don't have access to real drums, this one can come in handy if you're in a pinch. So we have things like kick, snare. We have some toms, a hi-hat, crash cymbals and so forth. Just like I did on the presence video, anywhere up here in the region where it says impact on this horizontal track, I can double click like on measure four and it creates a MIDI region. If I double click that blue bar, it's now gonna open up the edit window. Now it defaults with this drums diagram here. So anywhere I click, you'll see these little triangles, okay? The triangles represent a trigger for that sample. So if I click this first triangle with it highlighted, I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it up and down and you'll hear the sample change. So near the top at B0, it says the kick. So now it's gonna be a kick. Let's make this one a kick as well. Let's just get four clicks. So this is the four on the floor technique. Above the audio region, you can when it turns into a pencil tool, this is our loop region. I can click and drag, so we have measure four highlighted. And then if I click the slash key on my keyboard, that also shares with the question mark, now my loop region is blue. That means that it is active. And if I hit the space bar, you should hear a loop of the kick drum. Make sure you have the metronome turned off if you're making beats this way in PreSonus Studio One. You really don't need the metronome because stuff is gonna be snapped to the grid. If you have the metronome on, just make sure that you hit the C key on the keyboard. They'll turn the metronome off. So at this moment, we just have four kick drums. Let's add some more stuff to it. So we need a snare drum. Let's put the snare on four. Now we have this. All right, then we have some hi-hat stuff. Let's see what we can, if you don't like the grid that's on the bottom section of the MIDI edit area, up where it says quantize right here, one over 16, that means it's showing me 16th notes. 
I can make this say 30 second notes. And as soon as I do, you see there's more markers indicating those individual beats. So if I go to hi-hat closed, let's put a track right there. If I hit the D key with the hi-hat selected, it'll actually duplicate it and it creates it on the 30 second note. I don't want to do that. With the hi-hat, I'm probably gonna be doing eighth notes. So if I highlight both, click and drag, highlight both of the hi-hats. If I hit the D key now, it will duplicate it across all of the eighth notes in my region. So let's take a listen to this. Okay, a little too much. So what I wanna do is change this eighth note that's in between the beats. This is all gonna come down to preference at this point, but I wanna find the open hi-hat sound. And what's neat about most of the hi-hat samples is that the hi-hats will work together. So you'll hear the hi-hat open and then you'll hear it close, almost like real hi-hats do. So if I wanna highlight those individual hi-hats, I can click this one here, hold the shift key, and then click the individual ones next to it. Then use the arrow key down, move those down. Now let's take a listen to this. All right, let's say those hi-hats are too loud. One of the things you can do is edit the velocity of your hi-hat. So if I click and drag, select all of these hi-hats, at the bottom of the screen, you should see these little tabs down here. We want to select the one that says velocity. And with my hi-hats selected, I can change the velocity of all these. So it's more like 30%. Okay, the open hi-hats are still too loud. Let's take those and bring those down 25% or so. So as you can see, like if I were just doing this supplementary, something like that might even be a little too chaotic for what I'm already doing. If I'm already recording drums in this room, I've already got kick drum, I've already got snare drum, I may just want to use the hi-hats. But for purposes of the video, let's really get deep into this. Let's take this loop and add some toms to it. I wanna add a little tom fill near the end. So I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna switch this thing to 16th notes. Let's do a high tom. Let's look for the low tom, which is up here. Take a listen to that. Okay, I'm gonna select those floor toms that are a little too loud. Bring those down. The more you edit the velocities of these drum samples, the more realistic it's gonna sound. Now, even if you're doing electronic music, you still have some dynamics and stuff. You don't want everything to be at 100%. Typically, you don't want your hi-hat to be just as loud as your kick drum. So manipulating the volumes of these is gonna be a good way to add some musicality to it. Let's take a listen to this now. All right, if you're satisfied with the loop that you've got, you can actually duplicate the, duplicate the entire loop region together just by hitting the D key. So if I've got the audio track selected up top, if I hit the D key, I can duplicate it out. I'll probably do four times together. And if I select all of the audio regions and I hit the G key on the keyboard, it will create one massive loop that's four measures long. I wanna do this in part A and part B. So maybe this is a verse of a song and then I want a B section. So the B section is gonna be slightly different. I did just duplicate it, but I'm gonna to go to measure A, and let's take away some of this elements right here. Let's take away some of the hi-hats. Let's select all these hi-hats here and delete those. Let's select all of these hi-hats and delete those. And let's change the kick pattern. So the kick pattern is going to go with some 16th notes. Just like that. I'll select all of these. Delete those. I can click and drag to select all of the new, high, the new kick drum pattern that I'm using. Hit the D key and it should duplicate it out to measures 9, 10, and 11. So that's going to give me a little bit of different feel. Let's see, I'm going to add a ride symbol or 
let's add some Tom stuff. So right here at measure eight, so where we're starting, let's add a medium Tom. I'm gonna be on the offbeat here, duplicate those, change the velocity a little bit. Listen to that. Okay, I'll duplicate the tom hits and then we need to add another snare drum. We'll put that on two. So we got the snare on two and four. Let's keep that consistent all the way through measure 10 and measure 11. Okay, and I do want some sort of symbol, so let's do a ride. Make it the bell. I like that crash sound as well. Make that ride bell. Let's make that on every quarter note. We'll du duplicate that all the way out. I want to highlight these and turn down the velocity. Take a listen to that. Okay, so just take a listen to all the way through. This is our thuddy 70s kit. Just to remind you, here we have it right up here. I'm gonna hit play on measure four. Let's take a listen. We've got a part A, part B, four measures of each. All right, and of course you can duplicate that all the way out. If you want to differentiate all the different loops that you've created, I can select the audio region for measures eight through essentially 12. I can change the color of this one to be orange. That way I know that when I'm on this impact drums track, I know that the blue is my first loop. I know that the orange is my second. Of course you can select those audio regions. You can make your own arrangements. You can take these duplicate them out as much as you want. Now let's talk about some of the manipulation you can do like with the kick drum. I'm gonna isolate measure four. So this is where we have our original loop that we created, the blue one. If I've got this kick drum selected, here you have some filter and pitch functions that you can use. So just like we did in the presence VST video I released not too long ago, you can affect each of these samples so that it gives you a more unique sound. So if you want to filter off your kick drum, simply click where your kick drum is, enable your filter, make sure that blue light is on, and then your cutoff frequency is essentially going to roll off a bunch of high end on your kick drums. So I can turn this down to something like one kilohertz. Let's take a listen. So that sounds very different. If I turn the filter off, that's the original. Here's the filtered. You can turn up the drive knob, it's gonna add some saturation to it. You have more high end frequency. That sounds like something that came off of like a tape track or you know, any sort of those tube effects. All right, so on your filter tab, you have the cutoff frequency, you have the drive knob, be able to manipulate things like the attack, hold, and decay as well. Above that, you have the pitch, which the pitch can come in handy, especially those of you that want to take a kick drum and make it sound extra massive. You have a transpose and a tune function. So the transpose is going to be more egregious. If you really want to pitch shift something down, click the sample, then go to the transpose and go down to like minus five. That's a lot deeper sounding kick drum. If I take it all the way to minus 31, it's just not even registering in my headphones a lot. That's very subby. Okay. So I believe with the transpose is talking about half steps. And then with your tune function, you can go within certain amounts of sense. So if you're thinking about as a guitar player, your transpose is taking you down a fret each time. And then the tuning is really just the minute amount of tuning you have there. So you can mess around with those especially pitch shifting the snare drum. Here's the original, if I transpose it down. 
That sounds very different. And if you take a listen to the loop, So I like the sound of that because we took a thuddy 70s kit. We took a kick drum and a snare drum that sounded about like something you get recording in a bedroom. And we took it and we made it sound like it was affected, which is going to have more bang for your buck when you're using some of these samples. OK, so if you're going to use something like Impact Drums Kit, might as well give it some vibe, give it some flavor. Otherwise, if you're trying to make it sound like a real drum set, you may fail. You may. <laughs> You may get a lot of people where they're saying, oh, drums don't really sound real, so you might as well affect them a little bit, okay? So that's basic overview. I'm going to add another instance of impact. Anytime you want to change the preset, of course, you can go up here on the original loop. You can change the preset to something like the Imagine Kit. And if I hit spacebar, Now, the pattern is the same, but obviously it's not cueing the same samples that we had. So be careful when you're changing presets. I'd highly recommend you just keep it as it was. So this is the Thuddy 70s kit. If I want to have a different set of drums or a different drum sample, I'll just create a new impact track. So click and drag a new instance of impact, load up a new set. Let's go with something. Let's see. Funky kit. Let's see what that's got. There's that clap track. A lot of times you're going to use clap tracks. I mean, even in some of the acoustic stuff, it's good to have claps every now and then. So I can have the two of these working in tandem together. I've got them stacked on top of each other. And let's just say I want to use this one, this funky track, to add some claps. So here we have. D sharp one is a clap. If I duplicate that, we can put that on measure four as well. So you're going to hear the thuddy 70s kit playing its original loop. And then from this second kit, the funky kit, we're just using it for claps. So if it's space bar. You can duplicate that out and of course, select them all together, hit the G key to group them. If you really like the sound of the clap and you want to save some of the processing power on your machine, you can select the audio region up here and hit Control B. What that will do is it's now bounce those claps into audio tracks. So now I can call this one claps or just clap. And now I can treat it like a regular recorded audio track. Okay. It's not going to hurt to add claps in your music as well. And if I go back up to the clap track, you see everything's grayed out. So what you're hearing right now is going to be the MIDI information from the 70s drum kit. And you can hear the audio files of or the audio waveforms of the claps. Okay, there's a couple other things I want to show you what we can do. I'm going to load another instance of impact and I'm just going to find some sort of snare drum feature pop kit. Maybe let's try this one. No. About Gucci kit. Not sure I've heard that one. Okay, we're going to do a snare buildup. So you hear this a lot when you're headed toward a drop. I'm going to make this one a four measure phrase. We're going to scroll up where we had our snare drum. I believe it was called snare top. Okay. I'm going to make this over four measures. Have it like that. It'll progress from basically we have these half notes to quarter notes. We're going to duplicate the quarter notes. We're going to create eighth notes. And then from eighth notes, of course, we're going to create in between those. 
I'm gonna create some sixteenth notes. It's gonna get real chaotic. And then in between those, we're gonna enable this 30 second note deal. And we're gonna drag those in between. Okay, so as you can tell, we're starting with this snare drum, snare drum, snare, 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 and then it just doubles each time. So it's exponentially, it's just going faster and faster and faster, but in order to get that effect, we need the velocities of these things to ramp up as well. So I don't want to give it away 100% at the start. I'm just like these. These things to ramp. I can select groups at a time, just making sure that they are Increasing as much as possible. That's pretty much at 100%. So this is gonna sound kind of chaotic, but as you have the time to do it, go in and build in some of these velocities. Let's take a listen. This is gonna be a drop section, essentially. So let's take a listen from the beginning. You're gonna hear our thuddy drums kit. You're gonna hear the claps. And then you've got this, which is essentially gonna do a snare drum drop for us. All right, to get that effect, I wanna delete these here. Then what I'm gonna do is hit the three key. This is the slice tool. So I can slice this information up in the 70s kit. I'm gonna delete the clap there. So now we have this like blocked off rest section. Let's see how that performs. Going for measure four, and then we drop on measure eight. Yeah, and if you want it to be more explosive, as soon as we hit measure eight, I can add some samples in. Okay, so on our, I can't remember what this one's called. Let's see, it was the Gucci kit. As soon as we get done with this big snare build that it's got going on, a few things are gonna happen. So on beat three, we've got this sample. We've got a scratch. And then we've got this clap. And then we have an emphasis on the downbeat of measure eight. So that will carry us over into the new section. So here's the last bit of it. We'll take a listen to this. And that's about as far as it goes. Of course, there's more things you can do with impact, but I hope that's been helpful to you to introduce you to what impact can do. Let's take a listen. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and visit me over at heychrisgreen.com. Sign up for the newsletter. You won't miss out on future videos as they appear. Thanks for watching.